you notice the theme that has been running through everything we have been listening to and singing this morning? I was just thinking about how, oh, just recently we uh, got to meet together and have breakfast with our oldest granddaughter, and we got to meet her stepsister, at least we've met her before, but she didn't remember meeting us. We, she, she, we walked in, and uh, Raiden, our oldest granddaughter, she gave us a hug, and her younger sister comes up and looks up at us, says, who are you? And so <laughs> and we just started snickering. She didn't know who we were, had no idea why her older sister was hugging us. Who are you? And I was thinking about that question. How do you answer that question? Uh, I was thinking about uh, policemen don't answer that, uh, ask that question, do they? Uh, I mean, if you've ever been pulled over by a police officer, they don't come up to the window and say, who are you? What do they say? Yeah. <laughs> License and registration, please. And uh, all of us probably have something like this, right? And on it, it will have your name. Uh, and I was just thinking about, and it's got your address, where you live, your birthday, the day you were born. And I was thinking about the name on this card. First name was the name uh, that was given to me by my parents. And some of us may have a story behind that name as to uh, where that name came from. You may not realize. I was wondering why, uh, I, you know, it sounds like me, John, and my brother James, two brothers. That sounds very biblical, right? Anna, my sister, also a very biblical name. But... Mom told me that when she first came to this country from Korea, uh, there was a man named Johnson who was president. And uh, <laughs> so she wanted to name me Johnson. And Dad said, oh, no, that's not a very good first name. Why don't you just shorten it to John? So that's how I got my name. So that's the story behind my name. Some of you may have more interesting stories behind yours. But then I was looking at my last name as well. Realize, you know, there is more than one story behind that. There's actually a heritage that goes back generations behind my, uh, behind my last name. And that's how we identify ourselves is by name. And if you've been noticing as we've been going through all of these scripture readings, uh, name, that's the one thing that ties them all together. All of them had something to do with uh, a name. The very first scripture reading we looked at this morning uh, Jacob, who seemed to live his life doing everything the hard way, fighting for everything that God had promised to give him anyway, uh, earned a name from God. And he, he was a man who actually wrestled with God. And uh, what is your name? It's Jacob. Not anymore. Your name's not Jacob anymore. Your name is Yisrael which means wrestler with God. You have wrestled with God. You have wrestled with man. You have prevailed. In other words, you have never given up. That is your name. Kind of reminds me, there are some cultures in the world where you receive one name when you're born, then at some point in your life, you earn a name, and that name says something about who you are. And that's what uh, Jacob's name, who is now Israel, was like. And then, of course, he wanted to know, what is your name? And we know this person he's wrestling with to be God. And so why do you ask me my name? And it seems like God is pretty evasive here. But God eventually will give his name. Later on, when he uh, redeems Israel out of slavery, he gives them his personal name. When Moses says, who are you? Who am I going to tell them is the God that has sent me to deliver them out of the house of bondage? And then God gives them, gives him his name. And he later says, you know, by my name, I didn't make myself known to your forefathers. By Abraham and everybody else, I made myself known as uh, El Shaddai, God Almighty. But I didn't let them know my name, which is Yahweh. But I have given my name to you. And the reason is because I am enacting a covenant with you. I am going to have a special relationship with you as my people, and you will be able to call me by name. Everything in the whole world is mine, but you are my treasured possession out of all the peoples of the earth. And we read how uh, his name is strong. His name is mighty. His name is a strong tower his name is eternal. And I think the most significant thing about him giving us his name is, oh, we usually don't think of a God as doing that where you can know God by name. Uh, 
we refer to him, we pray to him, not just as God, but as our Father. Think about that. Our Father. That's how Jesus instructed us to pray to our God, our Almighty God, and our Creator as our Father. And that shows a type of relationship that we have that is unlike anything else in existence. And then we also read how the name which, uh, which we are saved by is the name of the Son of God, Jesus. There is no other name by which we are saved. He is our foundation. But you know, the challenge is that different names, different identities are thrown at us all the time. Who are you? What are you? Three men who are taken away from their homeland and planted into a foreign land to learn the language and the literature of the Chaldeans. In other words, we're sending you to college and you're going to learn to become one of us. You're going to learn our language. You are going to become, you may have been an Israelite before, but now you are a Babylonian. This is where your citizenship is. Actually, there were four of them. Do you remember what their names were? Daniel and who are the other three? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. But when Warner read the scripture reading this morning, their names were Azariah, Mishael, and Hananiah. And you may not realize that. It may not come across in English, but all of those names uh, identified, it's got the name of God somewhere in the name. Whenever you see I-A-H, that's from Yahweh. So Azariah, Hananiah, Yahweh is gracious. Uh, I don't remember what Azariah means. But anyway, so, but now we are changing your names. Your names now are going to uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They uh, honor the gods of Babylon. But as, if you remember the story, they never forgot their names. They never forgot who they are. And when they were called to worship and bow down as a test of their good citizenship, to bow down before the statue, but when they were called to do their civic duty, which is also their religious duty, they remember that we... <laughs> are strangers in a foreign land. Our citizenship is not in Babylon. We belong to God, and so therefore this is something we will not do. And that challenge comes to us all the time. We read the passage, uh, listen to the passage where there is a beast. That is the powers that be, and they're always trying to change our name and to change our identity. Here it is, 666. The text says, what number is that? That is the number of man. The king of Babylon was just a man. He may have thought he was all powerful, but he was just a man. The king of Rome was just a man. He wanted people to worship him, but he was just a man. And Daniel and his friends refused to take the 666. They refused to become a part of Babylon because they knew they served, but they knew who they were. They knew their identity, and that's something they took with them even into a foreign land. And uh, so we are reminded as we sing songs like, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. I am your holy place. I am your temple. You live in me and you serve the world through me. Therefore, my devotion, my dedication is to you above all else. And so even if the powers of me call me to do my civic duty, if that interferes with my duty to you, God, there is no choice what I choose to do because I serve you, God. I am your instrument of peace in the world. And so, our Lord is the one who determines who we are. Remember right after Peter declared his faith in Jesus, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Oh, blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah. But now, you're no longer Simon. Now you are what? Who are you? You are and that's how we know him, right? We don't call him Simon. We call him Peter. That was the name Jesus gave to him. You are Peter. And you know what Peter means? Rock. Yes. I know it's a cool sounding name, but it means something. Rock. You are a rock. You have placed your life on the only foundation, which is Jesus, 
Therefore, your life is solid, your destiny is guaranteed, and he is with you. Therefore, if when we place our life on the one foundation, when we build our life like the wise man in Jesus' parable, when we dig deep and build our lives on the one and only foundation which is Jesus, then we are also the rock. And no matter what storm comes, our identity remains intact, and we're not blown away by what comes our way. Oh, that last passage this morning reminded us and I, I've never thought about this until recently, that our name that we have now, maybe we don't carry even that into eternity. I will give you a new name, our Lord says. My identity, who you are, comes from me, not by anything else. It's not your career, okay? It's not your job. It's not even the fact that you're a spouse, all of these things are temporary. All of these things are of the world. The one thing that is eternal is who you are in me. That is where you get your identity from. So therefore, if something comes our way and they threaten to destroy our career, that doesn't destroy our identity, does it? It doesn't destroy who we are. Because who we are, nobody can take that away. That comes from our Lord. And... Uh, Someday he'll come back and he will call us, just like he called Lazarus, come forth, and he will call us and we'll go home to our eternal destiny. So let's go ahead and sing this last song and think about what it is we're saying when we sing this song and then we'll move uh, directly into communion after that.